Caterpillar Cowboy is a third-person ranching simulator we built in 72 hours for Ludum Dare 47, a game jam whose theme was stuck in a loop. Day one, the theme is in the loop. No, that's the name of the film. That's the name of the film, yeah. Stuck in a... Stuck in a loop. Your finger could be stuck in a hula hoop. Baggage carousel. Baggage carousel. Here are the technologies we've got. We have a rope technology. Loop around something with a rope. Squiggle around with a worm. Worm cowboy. Worm cowboy. Maybe there's some cows and they're, they're moving about. You have to stick them in a loop. Worm dog or a worm man. Make it less like a worm. Just thinking of what we can do graphically. We can have a face. Potentially, maybe it's like Katamari, you get bigger. Longer. Longer. You are a bagel. Maybe the people that the worm thing is getting are bagels. Either you're a worm, or you are a bunch of guys all holding hands. They're hugging it to death. Hold on, let me get a whiteboard. No! So we're saying a guy, a cowboy for now. The level is essentially like a long road thing that we got. Welcome to the Pennines Caterpillar Rancher. Caterpillar Rancher or Caterpillar Cowboy sounds good. I know how to, I know how to do the rope. I know how to make a move around. And then all it needs to do is detect him when you're in a loop thing. We've got our first little demo part. Um, this is the game. It's going to be a worm. That's the worm landing in the world there. And he's stuck in the middle of a blue crown. He's bulging out of one end. Bulging out. And we got some beautiful code and I've had to hard code in the ground because at the moment this is the ground that's exported from the 3D file. We had a couple of problems. There we go. We've gone for an awful graphic now. Look, there he is. It's all, it's all a lot more square. we now got this guy. Yeah, this grub just here. Um, well, where's he gone? And then we got this guy here. Now we can control it with the. He's walking around. Well, we sneak him around here. Come on, come on. There we go. This yeah. is how I imagine it to work. I think the difficulty you're getting before is that it just wasn't relative to the camera. Yeah, I think this is. This does seem right. Yeah, I I can do this intuitively. Go off the edge. <laughs> Go off the edge. Um, let me, let me mask <laughs> All right, so we've got that part. Now all we need to do is solve the, the main game mechanic of detecting that we've looped around something. Uh, we made it a little bit longer now. This is sort of length that we could be having. Oh my gosh. He's, it takes some strength now to... Oh, 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 and he has gone. Little snake guy, mm -hmm. and he can go around, and then there you go, he's eating it. Nice. Pete worked on ensuring the worm slid smoothly around objects, and I made the camera follow the worm. To avoid jerky camera movement, it doesn't follow the head directly. Instead, follows a point shown by the red sphere that gently catches up to the head's position. That is what we got at the yeah. moment. I mean, it looks good. Um, well, I mean, I don't think the cactus should move, but and they should collide with each other. But I got it so you can grab moving. That was hard enough in itself to grab moving things. Got him. One more. Oh, oh. <laughs> cowboy complete. This. I don't know. I don't know how this will turn into something, but then I like to do this as well. And then you just, you're just feeling yourself vibing. And then I probably need you to record the chorus. You might as just record that now. I'm caterpillar. 
to go in the booth. Find the booth. Oh my god. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, we're not too far back. Oh. We've managed to give him a cowboy hat. Let's not waste any more time. We, we've got we got some artwork now. Maybe tomorrow we'll get the rest of it done. Start of the day two. We've got no graphics at the moment, but we do have some music. Cue the music, boys. <laughs> Was a big long cowboy sliding down the road, looping up everything he saw. Cow, chicken, frog, dog, and toad. Yeah, pretty good, right? Pretty good. So the slappy part as well. Flipping cowboy, baby. That's live slapping. I modeled a caterpillar head in Blender after learning more about low poly art from the YouTube channel Southern Shotty. I use their gradient color palette for a consistent graphical style. It's looking decent with just a little bit of added panache. The game was lagging badly when the rope soft body wrapped around objects. So we re-implemented our character as a chain of rigid bodies connected by ball and socket joints. I had also modeled the chicken to fling itself around the map. This, you don't need, if you don't need the simulation, step out of the kitchen. This is the extended, you know, I've just put in 20 things and it works. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit crazy, but I mean, it's less crazy than it breaking. This is what the legs look like. <laughs> now, this now looks like a proper game. We did it, John. We did it. I don't know how we did it. Forget about those legs floating in the air. Now, if you play this as well, if you go into my one, you can play where I just let the hinges, let the balls just do their thing with the hinges. Whoa, what's, this is incredibly slidey. His back end's going everywhere, right? Yeah. So then what I've got, secret bit of code here, where I take the current velocity of the head and I use that to limit the velocity of the body bits. Oh yeah, that's much more uh, reasonable. I think I've also improved the speed too much. Improved it, multiplied it. The spheres shown here are the loop detectors. A segment within their radius would be counted as in the loop. Like the game Snake, each looped item adds another segment to your body, allowing us to add bigger objects which require you to grow in order to loop. Adding a simple directional light with shadows gave the scene depth, and with them it was easier to read your position, especially in the air. Particle effects made it clearer when you had looped an object. As good as this is, we got a problem with the big chicken. So I can go around these guys and they pop and they go around this guy's. But going around this guy's a lot harder. So I'm going to try and do a algorithm. Whilst I changed the loop detection, Pete searched for a pop noise. That's it. We used a point in polygon algorithm library to detect if an object was inside the 2D polygon created when the caterpillar's head touched its body. For simplicity, we ignored the Y position. To help players know if they're looping, we highlight it in yellow. You go, yeah, you know, it goes yellow. Uh, end of second day, um, well, we've got a guy and the loop. So tomorrow, all we have to do is make the game. What's up, guys? Welcome to the start of the day. Today, we're going to be finishing the game. Day three started with Pete adding a voiceover to explain the premise at the beginning. And we sent the song away to be mixed by our tech, Alex, to make it as loud as possible. I worked on building the world in Blender, adding obstacles and chickens. To let players discover they can loop anything, not only critters, 
The first gate blocking progression right can be removed by looping I mean, I the peg pretty. holding it up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then a semblance of a plot was created through signs placed around the map, hinting at the outlaw nature of our protagonist. Our household pile of wood came in handy. By 8.30, we designed the world with several obstacles, creatures, and a final boss. We had a jump mechanic that didn't have a purpose, nor the code to detect if you were touching the floor, so it was more like flying. We were about to remove it. However, earlier, we discussed turning into a butterfly at the end, so I worked on some basic wings as an easter egg for those who collected everything. Pete completed audio sounds for every creature while I fleshed out the plot. We had trouble with bits of your body getting stuck after respawning with lots of segments, so Pete added a clever piece of code that starts you bunched up and lets the physics engine sort itself out. We did lots of playtesting up to the deadline and finally submitted our work. If you'd like to play the game, there's a link in the description below. It works in browser on both mobile and desktop. There's also links to our Ludum Dare entry page, which contains comments on our game made by other players, and will display our results after the rating period finishes at the end of October. If you took part in the competition, leave a link in a comment below and we'll try to play and rate your game. We're not game developers by trade, more live performers who create comedy shows with code. As of the time this video comes out, we stream every Monday with sausage cannonballs, and Thursdays where we build a website in an hour. Also, we have a few music videos on our Twitter. Thanks for watching. Nice one. It's where the flavor is! Oh! oh.